Hey folks, you know there are various kind of atomizers, right? We got uh, Kefenesk RTS, we got Jennies, we got Trippers, we got Clearos, Cartos and whatnot. There is one more variety of atomizer, a rebuildable atomizer, which is different. You see many of us have started off with Carto tanks. We don't use Cartos nowadays, but those tanks, many of them were fantastic and we still love them. They were expensive as well. So the variety of atomizer today I'll be talking about is a Carto RBA, also called a tanking RBA, which goes inside one of those tanks, looks like a Cartomizer, but it's a rebuildable addy. Today we'll be talking about one of those called the Sophia by Leo. Well, this is the tank. I'm talking about the Addy which is inside. Sophia. Don't go by its looks. It's, it's not a Carto. It looks like a Cartomizer, but it's not. It's a RBA. Now these Carto RBAs, tanking RBAs, are there from a long time now. The first was the Killer 705 by the same maker by Leo. Then came the Diver V2. Diver V1 came first, V2 came later. This is by Atmistic. Now the Killer was revolutionary. I mean, uh, people moved away from Cartos using the Killer, but it had a flaw. It's not for discussion of this video. The Diver V1, V2 are good, but Leo's Sophia, it is the best. It's a bombshell, the most flavorful one I have ever come across, but it has a flaw. Not a flaw as such of the atomizer, but flaw with us, because in today's scenario, 2015, we have, most of us have moved away to a little aerial draw. This was 2013. It's good, but it's for mouth to lung heads. It'll be very difficult to take a direct lung through this atomizer but there is a way out that is exactly today's video is all about how to rebuild it so that people like me can take direct lung hits as well so let me take you down and rebuild it for you with a vertical coil but first let me take a wave of this one So here is the Sophia all washed up and ready. I've made a coil which is uh, 28 gauge nichrome wire and there is one NR leg. This side it's straight nichrome, this side is the NR leg. Let me explain why. Now in a traditional build of any CE2 type atomizer, we'll be having both legs coming from under from same direction and both legs would have NR legs because the legs would be inserted from these holes, right? Because the legs are longer at this end, we need NR legs. Now in this case, in today's build, for the vertical coil, the coil will be sitting like this vertically. Only one NR leg is going to come from this side. The other leg is going to come out from one of these wick holes and get trapped between the cup and the body. So the distance is not much. That's the reason I'm avoiding using another NR leg. So this is 28 gauge nichrome wire, 7 wraps around. And this is 28 gauge nickel wire. Now don't ask me how I welded it. Okay, let me show it. 28 gauge nichrome wire. So I'll be putting the NR legs using 28 gauge pure nickel. So the first step is to attach the, the coil on the spring post of the zapper. Then attach a small segment of this nickel wire to the zapper's alligator clip and weld it together. Then repeat the other end. Now you don't need to join yourself the NR legs. You can use pre-made wires as well. But with pre-made wires there is a problem. 
because the pre-made wires are generally of higher gauge. You usually get 32 or 34 AWG pre-made wires. Now because we will be re-waking it frequently and we would like to use the same coil for a longer duration. So having a higher gauge wire, 28 gauge in my case, suits the purpose better but not necessary. Now before I start the coil mounting process, let me give it a bent here because this bent portion is going to go down. Like this. Insert it through one of these holes and align the other end through one of the cutouts like this. Then pull it as much as you can because we want the coil to sit absolutely low touching the bottom of the cup. Give this part a bend, trim it off and insert it into the bottom. Like so. By the way, one important point to remember before you mount the cup, you see this bottom pin is a minor AFC of the Sophia. Now if you rotate this, you can see this hole, this hole can open and close. You can rotate the pin. Here see, it is closed now. And here it opened up. So when it is open, you can insert a small piece of canthal and see that it goes through and through like so. So we want it to be fully open like this. That's how you get the maximum air. While putting your cup, this pin might get rotated and if that happens, your airflow is blocked. We want the maximum airflow. So you may choose to keep this piece of canthal here while inserting your cup. So then this top leg, give it an angular bend and insert it into the base. Now remember like I told you, we want this airflow to be completely open. So if you want you can pass a piece of canthal through it and then insert it. So here is the bottom, the air hole is still aligned. And here is how the coil looks. Yeah, perfect. You guys must be wondering how the hell we are going to wake it. <laughs> we will. My standard, I'll be waking this with rayon, cut it vertically. Usually we would cut it this way, but in this case we are going to cut it like this, a small piece. Like so. Now why did we cut it vertically? Because we want this rayon fiber to go inside surrounding the coil between the cup's wall and the coil. For a regular wick, we usually cut it this way, right? Wick tails lie like this and they suck the juice. So when they lie like this, what are you facing? You are facing this section of the rayon. That's what we did by cutting it vertically. I want those fibers to go and sit here. Start from any one of the wick channels and poke them in. A needle should work better. Yeah, we are done folks. So in the end it should look something like this. Remember it is the same principle. We have a coil and we have uh, cotton sitting around it which will feed juice into it and atomize it. Just that we have wicked it differently. It takes little more time than your regular one but it lasts longer. I ran a couple of extra tanks 
with the same coil and wick. Then I would have otherwise done with a regular uh, micro coil and cotton. So time to give it a test fire and see. Yep, looking nice. So now is the time to put the side wick legs. Now because this wick is directly sitting around it, except for a little bit portion that it's visible here around the wick slots, nothing else is there to pull juice from the bottom, right? So I'm going to place two small strands of rayon or cotton here and they will just touch this top so that juice can feed easily from both the sides. Just a small piece. Remember first the base like this and then gently stretch it on top and keep it placed in the cup. Ensure that nothing is sticking out on the threads because we will be threading the top body right? Yeah like so. Repeat the other side. So here you go. Both my side legs are placed and the center hole is still open. Let's see how it looks. Here, it is through and through. Now let's put the top body and we will give it a vape. Oh yes, this side legs actually serve three purposes. One, because it, this bottom part has been tucked in, it will not allow excessive juice to go inside under the ceramic cup and leak out from here. Two, remember the one of the wire legs had come out, uh, it's, a, it's a live wire, I mean it's a resistance wire, right? So that can get hot. So this wick side leg will also hold juice, it can help in atomizing and keeping that leg cool. Third, obviously, it feeds juice from the sides to the coil. So here is the top body. Now thing to remember, Sophia has got juice control. This is the juice control. So it just doesn't leak unless you have flooded the chamber. So overnight when you are sleeping or when you are keeping it away for a long term non-use, just close the juice control. No juice will go inside. Absolutely nothing. And while vaping, open it up. If your juice viscosity is high, if you are using higher VG juice, open it more. If you are using less VG, more PG juice, keep it less open. I had been keeping it generally one turn and that feeds my juices perfectly. And let's take a first vape. Fantastic. It's gurgling because I have put enough juice here. So time to put it inside a tank. I am using Leo's cage here. It's a top filling tank. So it goes from the bottom like so. So now filling. Any juice bottle works. So the top cap has got grooves cut which you can utilize to tighten it down. Fantastic. Direct lung hits. So there you go. A tight draw atty. I have made it opener. And vapes well. Pretty open. Direct lung hits. Absolutely possible. Let me put it on a regulated mod. You can see how it works out. Same 1.4 ohms and firing it at 15 watts now. And 
amazing flavor. This is a very flavorful atomizer. The Sophia has a conical vortex coming up just about 3 mm from the dex base. It woozes out vapor from that conical orifice. I personally feel there is a rifling effect on the vapor. Once it comes out through that orifice, it rifles and comes out. There is a YouTube video somewhere about somebody who tested it. Some kilohertz or megahertz something he found out the frequency of the vapor inside. But that aside, fact remains, it's a fantastic vape. And this vertical coil, it opens up the horizon. Till 2013, many people were enjoying mouth to lung. Even today people are there who enjoy mouth to lung. But there are people like me who has migrated from mouth to lung to uh, direct lung hits. Uh, I don't do absolutely open draw. I like little restrictive, but still I do direct lung hits. And the Sophia with the regular coils was difficult to do that. But with the vertical coil gives you that capability. It doesn't mean that it's a RDA kind of thing, but it is opener, much opener. Direct lung hits. Good vapor production. And flavor, oh my god. This is the <laughs> bomb. Did I say that before? Nice vapor production for a Carto RBA. So there you go folks. I've shown you in detail how this uh, vertical coils can be made on a Sophia. It is not difficult, it is achievable and it opens up your draw. Besides, the vapor production is higher. And another good part of this vertical coils is the coil and wick, especially the wick, lasts longer. Now in a regular cotton wick, where you feed the wick horizontally, maybe about two tanks through, thereafter you will have to rewick it. But with the vertical coil, I have gone till about four tanks, five tanks. Somehow, the wick which is surrounding the coil gets burnt less than the wick which is inside the coil. I don't know what is the scientific reason behind it, but that's what it is. Let me take a last vape and close it down. And thank you for being with me, friends. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you now know how to do a vertical build. It is a nice one. And the Sophia is the best car to RBA. And with a vertical coil, boom. Bye.